We're live! Hey everyone! Ooh. Yay! <laughs> NaNoWriMo! <laughs> uh, what, are you, what are you doing? I'm throwing confetti. You can edit it in later. Uh, <laughs> we're actually live. We're not going to be able... I mean, people can see you right now. We're not, you... we're not editing that in. We're live. What? What yeah. do you mean? Like, we're live. Like, oh, we're alive. We're living beings. We are alive. Um, <laughs> I mean... Yes, but also we're live streaming. Oh, what do you mean by that? Like people can see you right now and like we're not going to then edit some confetti in when you're doing this because they already saw that happen and there was no confetti. I don't think you get how this works. Okay, we're just going to let you kind of believe that. <laughs> but we are super excited. We do wish we had confetti to throw because it's November 1st. Yay! Um, I don't know how many of you guys have started writing your novels yet. Um, we have, I have not yet, um, but I'm super excited to start. Um, if you guys have never been to a virtual writing before, basically what we do is we're going to have some writing exercises, some word sprints, um, and really the whole point of this is to get your inspiration flowing, your writing going, and really help you kick your first day off with a blast! Ooh, put an explosion there. I mean, <laughs> okay. <laughs> what did you mean by word sprints? Oh, good question. Don't know what a word sprint is? A word sprint is basically a timed writing exercise. So we'll give you you know, anywhere from three to 10 minutes. And during that time, you're going to write as fast as you can. You're basically trying to outpace your inner editor. Um, remember, again, with NaNoWriMo, it's about committing to your creativity and shutting your inner editor up um, and really outrunning that voice in your head that says, like, this is stupid, or like, you shouldn't be doing this. Um, and so it's a really it's a really awesome time for just like really freely committing to your creativity. Mm, sounds fun. Yeah. And during those word sprints, we'll offer you a um, like a prompt or a dare or something like that. You guys can use them if you want, um, but they're totally optional. But what if the prompt doesn't go with my story? Ah, that is why we call them suggested oh. prompts. So if the prompt for whatever reason kind of like bites what you're writing, go ahead and just chuck them out the window. You don't need to use them. Um, obviously, the whole point of this is get you write it, get your writing going. So if it's going to be a hindrance, defenestrate them, mm -hmm. which is a fancy word for throwing them out the window. Mm. And if you'd like to skip ahead to our prompts, you can go ahead and click down on the timestamp down here. No, 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 uh, no. What? No, not Austin. <laughs> Actually, the, the prompts are in the video description below. So if we say them too quickly, or you miss them, or you come in a little bit late, you can check out the video description below. We'll remind you for that, too. So you can kind of peek ahead and get a sense of what's coming up. Did we introduce ourselves yet? Yeah. Oh, we did? Yeah. OK, my mind literally blanked on that. <laughs> um, just in case we didn't. OK. Let's do it again for okay. your sake. OK. <laughs> My name's Tim. I work here at NaNoWriMo HQ. And this is? I am Austin Day. And I am a writer. <laughs> yeah. And Austin doesn't seem to understand the concept of live streaming. It's OK. You can go back and edit in that part. <laughs> Okay, so basically we're going to kind of do a warm-up sprint, uh, warm sprint in the beginning. Um, so this is just kind of like to get your juices flowing as we also kind of wait for some people to come back in. You know, those fashionably late people. Mm. Ugh. I mean, what you do for fashion. Anyway, so this warm-up sprint is inspired by Halloween, as is kind of our get-up. This. this is not my daily attire. This is actually Austin's daily attire, though. <laughs> um, so the warm-up sprint, again, you can see in the video description below. But we are inspired by Halloween, and we want you to include a trick or a treat in your next scene, however you want to interpret that. Um, so we're going to go for about three minutes. I'm going to set the timer. Um, we will try to give you a warning at the one-minute mark. We may forget. If we do, we apologize in advance. <laughs> um, but let's do it. We're going to go starting right now. And I'm going to set the time. And let's go.
Oh, we're a little past the one minute mark. Ah, it's time. Stop. Um, what happens now? Um, let's go ahead and see what some of the people wrote. Yeah. If you guys want to let us know your word counts during that sprint, you can put them in the chat. And if you want to include a sentence from what you guys wrote, um, that would be awesome too. We would love to see and check it out. Um, I saw some of you guys asking what I'm doing on my iPad, and the iPad shows the chat, so we can kind of keep track of what you guys are talking about um, and respond as well. Um, so definitely let us know what you guys wrote. Austin, what did you write about? Um, you know, what I wrote about is, I feel like you can edit something in of like a really interesting plot detail right there for me. <laughs> I don't know. I, mean, I don't know how to explain this to you that it's live. Yes, we're alive. I get it. OK, moving on. <laughs> um, if you guys haven't checked it out, actually, there's a really great Twitter hashtag called NaNoWriMo Openers, where people put out either the actual first lines of the nano novels they're writing or just amazing openers in general. I remember the my favorite one that I read from like a couple of years ago was something like, um, <laughs> when we looked back, there were three uh, tracks of footprints in the sand. Jesus cocked his gun. They found us. <laughs> Which is pretty incredible. Um, but yeah, first day, thank you so much for that warm up sprint. We're super, super excited to have you here. If you're just joining us, we are pumped. We're doing word sprints. We're writing like crazy. It's November 1, and Austin doesn't get what a live stream is. <laughs> Um, so we're going to look at some of your things now. So Renee Scarcella wrote 149 words during that three-minute sprompt. Sprompt? Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> Just edit that out, too. <laughs> during that three-minute sprint, which is amazing. Um, let's see. You see any good ones you want to read on? Oh, mm -hmm. Randy Sabati wrote 43 words and asked, Ooh. is that bad? That is not bad. That's awesome. That's 43 more words than you had a second ago. So pretty impressive. Um, Timeless Dream Self wrote, love your costume, Herbert added, to practically every child who opened the door. Halloween was their forte. For the rest of those at the party, not so much. <laughs> <laughs> um, see anyone? Um, let's see. Uh, okay. 211 words here by Maria Jose Murillo Flores. And she says, my fellow citizens, Harriet said, you're in for a treat. I wrote about a prince about to blow his cover in front of a lot of people. Whoa, that is a treat. <laughs> that would be awesome. Um, let's see. Caitlin Cushing wrote, he smirks as he puts a plush magnet around his neck. There are little stuffed chicks sewn into the plush. What do you think, Athy? I'm a chick magnet. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Incredible. <laughs> um, let's see. <laughs> <laughs> some good ones in here. <laughs> um, let's see. Oh, Laura Mockenstern wants to talk about the Slytherin's wand pen. Oh, yes, it's um, it's Voldemort's wand. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty cool. Um, what else can you tell us about it? What's its core? Its core is Phoenix core, of course, because it's um, the same as Harry's. Oh, is it really? Yeah. Oh, how did you read, read the books? I mean, I did, but... <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see. Holy smokes, there's so much happening. Um, 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 okay, ready? So Emerald Goldtop wrote, Mabel used both hands now to hold the branch as the general set an ember to it. It caught quickly, its torn end fine enough to catch. Placing one hand on the stones for balance, she vaulted lightly. 
whoa, that was super visual. I love that. I was mm -hmm. really like, I could totally picture that in my mind. Ah, people heard me say Spromped. <laughs> <laughs> um, just so you guys know, we're actually on a little bit of a delay, so we're th seeing things um, a little late. Um, so Sable Aradia wrote, Vaughn grinned, and with some effort, he knocked two arrows to the string, drawing a careful bead on the approaching corpse. Ooh. Zombies. Mm. Maybe medieval zombies. Mm. Yeah. Right? Yeah. They're using a bow. Or maybe it's just someone who's like really into compound bows. Or maybe it's a makeshift boat because there's nothing left in the zombie apocalypse. So many possibilities. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do you want to read the last one before we move on? Yeah, sure. Let's try this one. Um... Uh, this, this, uh, which one? Pick <laughs> one. You pick one for me. They're so good. Okay. What about, let's see. What about, what about, what about this one? Okay. This one? Mm -hmm. Some random sheets of paper in the notebook had fallen out and scattered around the foot of her bed. Scrambling to put them back into order, Ken saw a note on one page. She had an idea. And this was written by Eagle Feather Girl 28. I choose to believe it's a trick. Mm, her idea. <laughs> <laughs> um, awesome. Cool. So also, we forgot to make one very important introduction. This is Blobby. You may have noticed that he's looking very skinny lately. We've been trying to feed him but he refuses to eat anything but the finest caviar. Ever since he started appearing on these virtual red-ins, he's gotten really big ego. It's his own fault. He's a diva. Mm -hmm. Anyway, he's here. He's great. <laughs> um, if you're just joining us, we are doing word sprints here designed to help you write um, a lot of words today. So let's jump right into our next one. Um, these prompts have titles and a unifying theme, you may notice. But uh, actually, the theme for the, I forgot to say, the theme for the virtual writing today is firsts, because it makes sense. We're on November 1st, uh, and you're about to start writing your novel. So um, all of the prompts are kind of revolving around firsts. And again, like we said before, if the prompt doesn't work for you, totally feel free to ignore it. Um, if somehow you want to get creative or it inspires you to fit it into your novel, like even if it doesn't necessarily immediately lend itself to it, that's great too. But again, like if it doesn't work for you, ignore it and just feel free to like write whatever you're writing for the next like prompt time. Okay. So the first prompt is, you know you're my saving grace. Write about the person who's first in your character's heart. Hmm. What might that mean, Austin? Oh, maybe it's the person that they think of the most or first comes to mind. Oh, I like that. Or maybe it's the person that they have a grudge against and oh, no. can't stop thinking about either. Anyway, open to interpretation. This is going to be a little bit longer. We're going to go for five minutes. And so we're going to set the time right now. And let's go.
for about a minute left. Uh, wrap up those sentences, those final sentences. Uh, cool. If you guys want to let us know uh, your word counts during that five-minute sprint and then a sentence or two, that would be awesome. Um, I saw some questions in the uh, chat. So if you guys um, lose track of what prompt we're on, um, they're all in the video description below. So you can just refresh. If you happen to come super early before we put the video, the prompts in the description, you might have to refresh your page. Um, but otherwise, they should be right there. Um, and we'll try to remind people which prompts we're on. And if the prompts aren't working for you, what might you do, Austin? Uh, could you try writing just whatever's on your mind? Oh my god, you're a genius. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, totally, again, the prompts are supposed to help you. Like, And if they don't help you, then you can totally ignore them. Um, and I see some of you guys saying that like you're not totally sure what to write, or you're just like feeling like complete block right now. Um, and facing that blank page with dread, which is totally familiar. I've 100% been there. Austin, have you been there? I'm there right now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, here's the thing. So like a lot of that, you know, that paralyzing fear that comes from your inner editor kind of like saying like, you don't know what you're saying or like, you know, like you have no ideas or none of your ideas are worth anything. Uh, but that's completely untrue, you know, and like a lot of times the reason that you wanted to take part in NaNoWriMo is because you have a story to tell and you have ideas that are worth expressing. Um, so even if you feel kind of like silly doing it, um, just kind of like break that log jam. You might just want to free write, you know, just like put your pen to the paper or put your fingers to the keys um, and write whatever that comes to mind. And even if it's gobbledygook, even if it's gobbledygook, AKA a sprompt or, <laughs> uh, or like, you know, even if it's just kind of like, you know, um, a stream of consciousness where you're just like, I don't know what I'm doing. What am I writing? What is my novel? Like it might just like get you in the habit and kind of like really like push some of those blocks away. Um, so I would recommend that possibly. Mm, sounds uh, like good advice. Awesome. What's helped you when you're kind of like stuck? Ooh, I like just, putting my characters in different situations, actually. Um, maybe if I'm facing a problem throughout the day, um, I think, what would my character do in this situation? Yeah, totally. And like anything you really write during November is like, that's creative and that's about your novel, like whether it actually ends up in your final draft or not, like that's totally fine. That's the whole point of a rough draft is kind of like collecting different scenes um, and trying to put a narrative together that later you can refine. So if these prompts are leading you to kind of create little vignettes within your story, like that's awesome. You might find a place for them later. Um, but again, like if you'd rather just kind of like straight on write your novel the way that you planned, you can totally do that during these writing sprints too. We'd love to see that. Cool. Um, we're going to look at some of the holy smokes. Um, oh, a lot. Yeah. <laughs> Three, T. Little wrote 324 words, which is crazy. I'm like not even going to count my handwritten words, but I'm pretty sure it's like 90. <laughs> <laughs> um, you want to read Ari Pollax? Yes. Uh, as the years passed, the boys grew closer. Every day, Sebastian would go to the castle, trailing behind his father and seek out Luke. Do you think in that sentence, uh, or in that story, the father is the first in Sebastian's heart, or Luke is first in Sebastian's heart? I think heart? Luke is the first in Sebastian's ah, heart. Ah, I like it. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. Um, Rosen Du, sorry if we get, if we mispronounce your name slash usernames. That's like we're really sorry. That embarrassing but it'll probably happen <laughs> um, so Rosen Du wrote no rescuing necessary Hyo said with mock solemnity cross my heart and hope to lie that's hope to die I corrected him 
yeah, but I'm much better at lying. <laughs> <laughs> That's fantastic. Um, what about Cindy Holsher's? Cindy Holsher wrote 189 words. Good Woo! job. That's a high five. <laughs> oh, you can edit her hand in, hitting yours. It'll be great. Okay. <laughs> I'll make sure to do that. Okay, good. Um, you were my saving grace during our high school years, Carrie. You were a sparkle ember, a sparkling ember of warmth, life, and joy. You banished all shadows wherever we went. Oh, man, oh, that's, that's so really heartwarming. Sweet. That, like, literally, like, made me feel like a little tingle. Um, let's see. Nettie, Netta Lee Barsetta, Sata, I'm so sorry. Uh, Netta Lee wrote, maybe somehow there will be a way to find her and at least make sure that she is safe, if not to get her back home before she causes the whole planet to explode. Whoa. That got, that escalated quickly. <laughs> it escalated very quickly. <laughs> Definitely get her back home. <laughs> Whoa. Um, do you want to read Kalak X's? Sure. 301 words. Excellent. Holy smokes. Her beloved cousin, Allison, who had saved her life by giving her own. Cosette, mm -hmm. I'm going to guess, uh, would never have inherited her house and small fortune. Without her, Cosette would be under this monster forever oh man i wish we could read all of these you guys they're so good and i feel like they keep catching our eyes um, but we really want to make sure you guys get to write as much as possible so i think we're going to go right into our next prompt if that's okay good call um so hold on to this okay would you like to introduce thank it? you sir yes i will introduce the next prompt the title of this prompt is or a beautiful nightmare Write about the first time your character was truly afraid. So we're actually going to go double the time of the last one. We're going to go for 10 minutes this time. Um, and actually, thanks, major thanks for some of these prompts because um, Kelly Gilbert, who uh, Kelly Lloyd Gilbert, who's on our associate board and is actually a published author, her book came out earlier this summer called Conviction. Um, she helped us come up with some of these prompts, and we're really grateful to her. And you should check her out. Um, so again, that prompt is when I'm prompt to write about the first time a character was truly afraid, a character in your novel. Um, and so if you guys need to see that again, it's in the video description box below. Um, thank you to Catherine Cross. I think I saw you um, posting prompts into the chat when people asked. I really appreciate that. Um, so yeah, we're going to go for 10 minutes. And the title of this prompt? Oh, I said it. Oh, OK, good. <laughs> <laughs> OK, ready, set, go. Sorry, I'm going to interrupt really quick to just say um, I saw someone ask where you write the prompts to, Bo Winnie. Um, just write them wherever you're writing your novel. So in your Google Doc or your, you know, your notebook, we're writing in journals. Um, so wherever you want. Okay, sorry, back to writing.
Oh, we just passed uh, the halfway point, so we got about five more minutes left. Got about a minute left. Uh, wrap up those sentences. It like literally makes me jump. I know. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Um, let us know your word counts and a sentence or two. All oh, right. Austin, do you want to share a sentence? You don't have to. Um. Okay. 
Okay, okay. I'll read one. Okay. Elise looked back at the man. He slowly lifted the knife up to his own throat. No, no, the man screamed. Scary. <laughs> that is a not even a beautiful nightmare. No, it's not a beautiful nightmare. Just a straight up nightmare. Kind of a straight up nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> um, I actually was scrolling back in the chat a little bit, and I saw a really cool sentence that I wanted to read in Spotlight. So Alexis Clark wrote, uh, you're like a heartbeat, soft and underlying everything. Mm -hmm. That was really cool. Yeah, that's nice. I wanted to bring that out. And then also, a uh, huge welcome to Anime Freaky Dubs, who drove for five hours to get home in time for this. <laughs> <laughs> Worth it. Are we? <laughs> you decide. <laughs> <laughs> um, so let's see if we've got some good sentences here. Holy smokes. Uh, Brendan Thompson wrote 241 words, wow. which is insane um do you want to read that one okay 297 words by uh ryan matthew then with force he vomited his chicken nuggets and fries on his dad <laughs> <laughs> do you think that was the moment he was truly afraid or his dad was truly afraid i think it could go both ways this was also a viewer request. Oh, okay. There we go. <laughs> good call. Good call. Yeah, he looks much more like prepared to write now. Mm -hmm. Um, let's see. Uh, nerdy girl. Nerdy girl wrote. Kiara shivered in the cozy corner of her bed. Her family had left her, all because of the secret she had kept. She was really, really scared. What would she do without her family? And then in uh, parentheses, then revenge. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, 280 words by the happiest of noodles of, of noodles. Mm. Yeah, ramen oh. noodles. Mm. Yeah, yeah, I think that would be good. Vermicelli, maybe? Rigatoni? Mm. <laughs> Are those noodles? I guess not. Oh, maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> um, there were entire cults and researchers who dedicated their entire lives to con contacting these dragons. And here he was, 11 years old, and literally staring into the face of death. Death capitalized as a proper name. Mm -hmm. Is death a dragon? Probably. Maybe. Yeah. That's really cool. Yeah. I'm intrigued. Uh, let's see. Um, May Cameron wrote, it feels like a dream, a memory you can no longer see. Now you have to run, but even that is becoming a memory. You cry. They are chasing you. Light of their fires and swords reflecting in your eyes. Mm -hmm. Love that you're writing in second person, May. That's super awesome. You don't see that too often, but I feel like it's really uh, can be super evocative. Um, you want to write? Whoa, Nana Sophie Lika Hansen is joining the write-in from Denmark. Welcome. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do you want to read maybe? Let's see that one. Okay. So this is Nora Went. When it was finally time for the seminar. She went on stage and spoke loud and gave powerful ideas. It was a full house, but she she really wasn't scared once it started. I mean, like as much as like the like your dude who has the knife to his throat is scary, like public speaking <laughs> might be truly more frightening. It's true. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> um, should we read one more, maybe? Let's see. Holy smokes, there's so many amazing word counts. Um, a Mind Amaze wrote 390 words. Janice Mataus wrote 592 Whoa, words. Yeah, that's incredible. Whoa. Um, Dana Hansen Campbell wrote 420 words. Oh, Alvard Nemesis wrote 600 words. Dang. Um, and let's see. What about... Do you want to read that one? Okay. Not to be over dramatic. But I'll probably become close to remotely insane. I'll end up being like a cat lady. The ones who are fat and in their forty or and their forty-eight cats are fat and they aren't even married. <laughs> That's by Kiki Boyce. 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 Boyce is yeah, right. Boyce. Um, forty-eight cats is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I think that'd be his nightmare. I would love forty-eight cats. You would not love forty-eight cats. Uh, I might love 48 cats. And four <laughs> cats. Can you edit in like 48 cats all around us when you, this goes live? <laughs> right here. Right if you're here. just joining us, Austin does not realize what a live stream is. Uh, 
I think I'm pretty sure I get it. <laughs> <I'm>, okay. <laughs> yeah, one right here. Uh, okay. All right. <laughs> um, we're going to do one more. Uh, read one more. Let's see. Um, Wes is reading. Wrote, chaos broke out all around me. I could feel my throat go dry, and the salespeople and commoners edge closer and closer to me, ready to attack, like a tiger about to pounce onto its prey. I love that the salespeople are joining with the commoners. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, okay, so we're going to go on to our next prompt. Um, Austin, do you want to share what this prompt is? Yes. This is prompt number three, right? Here yeah. We go. Third sprint. The prompt is, we run this mother. And <laughs> it's to write about the first thing a character realized they were good at. Yeah. Um, again, with the prompts, if they don't work for you, totally feel free to ignore them um, and write whatever you want. Um, and then if you are uh, need a quick refresher on what the prompt was, you can check in the video description below. Oh, so now you believe there's something right here. <laughs> I'll explain it to you later. <laughs> Interesting. Um, so we're on prompt three right now. And we're going to go for another 10 minutes, I believe. Does 10 minutes sound good? You know, let's try going for seven minutes. Ooh. Yeah. So we'll try to give you a halfway warning and let's go right now.
we're just past the halfway point, so we got a little more to go. Ooh. Time's up. Cool. Let us know your word counts for that sprint um, and a sentence in the chat. Um, just a heads up, we're running a little bit behind, I think, because um, we've got one more sprint to go and we wanted to make it a longer one. So we might cut it down a little um, and we might actually go over a little. So sorry about that. Um, <laughs> Bobby was cold. <laughs> Some of you mentioned that you think Blobby is a Hufflepuff because he's wearing a Hufflepuff scarf. I'm pretty sure Blobby's a Slytherin. What? Yeah. Mm. You really think so? You think he's a Hufflepuff? I guess all good divas belong in Slytherin, right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, awesome. How did that uh, word sprint go for you? Oh, it was pretty good, actually. Yeah? Yeah. Nice. Um, do you want to share with what, what you wrote a little bit about? Okay. Um, I'm actually going to share from my la from the last word sprint because this one actually was a little tougher for me. Um, but let's see. Oh. <laughs> um, the dead, dead, deadest Jay had ever been was when his mom's name showed up in a Snapchat friends list and he realized that maybe, just maybe, he had just epically exposed himself. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, cool. So let's read some sentences and see they, how people have done. Indra Froering wrote 152 words, which is awesome. And Sharpest Lives Forever wrote 321, which is insane. Um, oh, actually, I saw some things before that I wanted to talk about. I forgot to say. I wrote them down because I'm uh, weird like that. 
so I saw a bunch of people giving advice to um, so Timeless Dream Self, I think, who was asking about like how to like silence your inner editor. Um, and that's a really tough question and a really important one for NaNoWriMo. Um, what do you, do you have any strategies for silencing your inner editor? Inner editor? I think just identifying that that is your inner editor speaking mm -hmm. is one of the biggest things for me. Once I realize, oh, that's my inner editor, I just, you know, defenestrate them uh, from, <laughs> <laughs> from the word we learned earlier. <laughs> um, I mean, that's a really good point because I think like sometimes like we uh, hear that voice in our head and if we don't identify it, we kind of like take everything it says as gospel. Mm -hmm. and, like It's like, oh yeah, that must be right because it's in my head. Um, but it's so not true. And so like, I think some people were saying things like if you want to write, um, like take down your backspace key so you can't kind of like use it at all, <laughs> uh, which is a good idea. That's great. Like, um, I think there's a site called Write or Die um, where you can it's like basically a window like this and then it blacks out everything you write before so you can literally only see the word you're typing um and so that can be really helpful if you catch yourself just like constantly reading back what you wrote and um trying to hide it and trying to like delete it or edit it or like think that it's terrible mm -hmm. um so that might be useful um i would say that you know just maybe a kind of like alleviating the pressure a little bit and maybe starting your writing session with just like a free write session where you're like okay this may or may not go in my novel um, and then putting, you could even have, I know a lot of people who actually have two documents. So like one document is like their novel and this document is for mm. like snippets. That's what I do. Really? Yeah, that's what I do. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's super helpful too. And like, if there are things in your novel document that like you feel like, like your inner editor, your inner editor just won't shut up about, you can copy and paste it into your snippets bit. So at least you can save it and at least you can add that to your word count. Um, but also like maybe like, it will like appease your inner editor a little. <laughs> yeah, I write directly in my snippets per, um, piece actually, and then I copy and paste it into my novel and plop uh, it down in the right spot that I think it belongs in. That's smart. Okay, we're gonna read a couple more and then we're gonna do this last sprint. Um, if you guys can stick around a little bit later than three, that's awesome. If not, we totally understand. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, so let's see, what about, what about this one from Anxious Melon? Okay. She saw a group of children around her age wearing gloves and headgears, chattering excitedly and pointing at the boxing ring. Carol bounded towards them. If it was a competition, she was gonna win. Oh, she would win, sorry. <laughs> That's awesome though. I love that children are about to ba box. Yeah. <laughs> um, bad Janet, bad Janet Genetics asked, do we go for quantity or quality? Fewer words for me would mean more thought and possibly better quality. Ugh. Um, so, I mean, it kind of depends like on what you want to do, but generally in NaNoWriMo, we really say like, go for, go for quantity, you know, like there's like any other month you can go for quality. Any other month you can kind of like really like labor over your sentences. But a lot of times actually like writing that rough draft is all about kind of just getting your story out on paper and then perfection can come when you're revising later on. Um, quality will come when you come around to editing. <laughs> yeah, totally, totally. And I mean, the whole idea of like writing a super quality rough draft, like it's just, it's really challenging to do. And like, honestly, like a little bit unrealistic. Um, and so like, if you're just like committed to writing your rough draft and it's like, we'll see what happens, you know, and you discover kind of your story and your novel. Um, I would definitely say like, go for like quantity right now. Mm -hmm. um, we do actually have a really awesome pep talk from Catherine M. Valente from a couple of years back though, where she was like, um, I remember one line, I was like, you can write something good and something fast. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that's like a cool challenge if you want to set that up for yourself, but don't let that stop you from actually like writing. Um, let's see. So you want to read Rosie Readers? Okay. So Rosie Reader wrote 200 words. Excellent. I don't want to deal with fit. I'm oh, sorry. I can't see it right there. <laughs> I don't want to deal with the fa with failing at the one thing that really mattered. I don't do well with failure. I'm not saying I'm perfect, but I haven't screwed up too many things in 20 years. Things are about to change. <laughs> Whoa. Obstacles are about to rise. No. <laughs> uh, we're going to write, read one more, and then we're going to go into our last minute. We're going to do that sprint for um, just like five minutes or something. Uh, so let's see. Maybe this one from Misha Sonsting. Um, go ahead. Oh, OK. Wind blowing in her face, she took the first jump, the bike purring like a kitten underneath her. She was flying. 
Then, as the ground came rushing back, she realized this is what she was meant to do. Ooh, love it. Do you know that's like? I mean, it probably it's like a motorbike, right? Because of my bike's pairing. Yeah, that's so that makes sense. That's super cool. I'm excited for that. All right, so we're gonna move right into our last prompt. Thanks for um, putting up with us and for sticking with us a little bit later. We really appreciate it, um, and hopefully this uh, will. Uh, help add to your word counts for this uh, virtual write-in. So the fourth sprint is, um, oh. oh, go ahead. Isn't it? Okay. <laughs> uh, called everything you own in a box to the left, um, right about the first time a character broke a promise. So this could be your main character. It could be your antagonist. It could be a supporting character, um, just any character, the first time they broke a promise. So we're going to go for five minutes this time. And we are going to start right now. Got about a minute left in this last sprint.
Awesome. Um, if actually you guys now, if you can figure out what your total word count was for the virtual write-in, um, that would be awesome to know. Uh, yeah. Did I count yours? I don't, that's a, that's a lot actually. I'm pretty surprised. Yeah, uh, you did write a lot. I think I got like four pages, which is like yeah. handwritten, which is pretty, I'm pretty happy with that. Yeah, same here. Um, Awesome. So yeah, let us know those word counts. I'm gonna look right now to see if it's if we've caught up to real time. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so Ramin Amir wrote, I hadn't realized what I was doing until she whimpered, you promised. Her small voice broke along with my heart. I had, I had promised, but not all promises are meant to be kept. She had to know. Wow. Oof. Sounds brutal, but Heavy. necessary. All right. Um, which one? Holy smokes, Indra Froering um, wrote 480, whoa, 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 486 words lag writer wrote 1,343. Oh, look at this one. Uh, it's Killock X wrote 1,830. That's awesome. Oh my gosh, these total word counts are awesome. Um, Bug Taylor wrote 1,200 plus words, which is so cool. If you guys don't know already, um, the daily kind of par, if you want to write the same number of words every day to reach 50,000 words, is 1667. Um, and so many of you guys are like so close to that. Um, let's see. Ukulele Warrior wrote 600, 1,600 words total during this uh, virtual writing, which is so cool. We're so excited. This is amazing. Um, it also makes me really realize that I need to go home and write a lot more today. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> me too. Um, but should we read a couple more? So Luke Hartman wrote 876 words in all, which is so great. Um, Dark Player 85 wrote 1622, nearly got the daily goal, which is so cool. Wow. Um, Want to read maybe Stardust Panda sentence? OK. Let's see. Stardust Panda wrote, I ran. I ran as fast as I could. I didn't care. I was breaking my promise to my dad to not run from my problems and to face them. These pro these problems were too the great. The, these too, problems were, were too, too great. great. Yeah. The the demon too vicious. Yeah. Intense. Yeah. Wow. Um, cool. So we kind of want to make a few announcements before we go. Thank you again for sticking with us, even though we went a little late. <laughs> Um, if you want to um, come to another virtual write-in, we're basically doing them twice a week all through November. Um, and we are, our next one is this Wednesday at 3 p.m. Pacific time. Austin, will you be there? Um, you can edit me in. It'll be fine. <laughs> so no, Austin will not be there. Um, but this weekend also um, on Saturday, so it's actually going to be virtual write-ins are usually going to be on Wednesdays and Saturdays. Um, and this Saturday, we're actually going to have three virtual write-ins because it's going to be double up donation day. Um, that day, we're going to challenge you to double your word count. Um, that could mean either double your total word count, which would be amazing, or double um, your daily word count goal. So um, we're going to do three virtual write-ins to help you through that then. Um, you can check out all this stuff on our events page. It's nanorimo.org slash calendar. Mm -hmm. And it will not be right, right here. here. No, it will be right <laughs> it here. It will not be it right there. Be right. <laughs> um, and then a couple of things that we also wanted to let you know. Um, the winter shirt sale ends today. Um, and so if you are either super confident that you are going to win in November, you can pre-order your shirt right now and we will reserve it for you. Or if you feel like you need a little bit of a push to really like make sure you cross that finish line and commit to your writing this month, you can get it now. It's kind of like a bet on yourself. Um, Austin is modeling it beautifully. The reason we're not wearing it is because it's a lady small. <laughs> um, but it's really cool. You should check it out in the store. If you get a chance, it's store.nanorama.org. And speaking of the store, <coughs> Um, we want to thank you guys so much for coming out and writing with us today. Um, you can get 10% off in our store right now with a coupon code, and the coupon code is flawless. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so <laughs> that was really embarrassing, but you can check it out and use it in the store um, for a bunch of cool stuff. The sweater is in the store, and um, we've got mugs, we've got awesome journals, no wand pens, unfortunately. 
but again, thank you so much for joining us for all these amazing sprops. <laughs> and if you like this video, you can click on our other videos in the links right here. And oh, actually, um, that does remind me that if you um, need another virtual write-in today, the YA Word Nerds, who are um, guest vloggers on our channel, they actually created a video you can check out um, if you go to the channel page right now. But they're also running another virtual write-in today uh, at 7 p.m. Eastern, I think, so not too far from now. Cool, thank you so much. Happy NaNoWriMo, happy November 1. Right, Yay. right, right. <laughs>